السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the lectures of the head and neck course I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the blood supply of the scalp and face I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt We already have discussed in two presentations the layers of the scalp the muscles including the occipitofrontalis muscle which lies in the scalp, the orbicularis oculi muscle, the orbicularis oris and the buccinator muscle. These are facial muscles. And in another presentation I talked about the nervous supply of the scalp and face including their sensory and motor nerve supply. In this presentation, I will cover the blood supply of the scalp and face, including their arterial supply, their venous drainage, and also their lymphatic drainage. The arterial supply of the scalp will be via five arteries, three in front of the auricle and two behind it. The supratrochlear artery, the supraorbital artery. These two arteries are branches from the ophthalmic artery, which is a branch of the internal carotid artery. Also, we have the superficial temporal artery, which is one of the two terminal branches of the external carotid artery. Behind the auricle, we have two arteries. We have the posterior auricular artery and the occipital artery. Both are branches from the external carotid artery. So in this diagram, we can see the common carotid artery, which splits into internal carotid, not seen in this view, and external carotid artery. Uh, this external carotid artery is the one with the branches coming out of it. From its posterior aspect, we can see two arteries, the posterior auricular and the occipital. Behind the neck of the mandible, the external carotid artery splits into two terminal branches, maxillary and superficial temporal. The internal carotid artery, which gets inside the cranial cavity, will give many branches. One of them is the ophthalmic artery, which finally terminate as two uh, branches that come out of the orbit. We have the supratrochlear and lateral to it is the supraorbital arteries. This is the superficial temporal artery, one of the two terminal branches of the external carotid. And this is the posterior auricular and the occipital arteries branches from the posterior aspect of the external carotid artery. Now we can see the five branches that supply the scalp, three in front of the auricle and two behind it. In this top view, we can see the auricle here. In front of it lies three branches, the superficial temporal artery, the supraorbital and supratrochlear arteries, while behind the auricle we have the posterior auricular and the occipital, and they all communicate with each other. So the scalp is one of the places where the internal carotid artery branches can get into communication with the external carotid artery branches. Regarding the arterial supply of the face, the main artery that supplies the face is the facial artery, which is one of the branches that come out of the anterior aspect of the external carotid artery. The facial artery is characterized by its spiral course or tortuous course because it crosses the mandible and lies obliquely at the face till it reaches the medial angle of the eye. Along its course, it gives the submental artery, the inferior and the superior labial branches, the angular artery that we can see passing obliquely until it reaches the medial angle of the eye. Also, the superficial temporal artery, again, it is one of the two terminal branches of the external carotid artery, it gives transverse facial artery we can see it here passing along the zygomatic arch also there are small contributions uh, from the small arteries that accompany the sensory nerves of the face we have 
zygomatic facial, zygomatic temporal arteries, we have mental artery, we have buccal artery, and so on. For the venous drainage of both the scalp and face, the pattern is like this. The supratrochlear and the supraorbital veins both unite together to form the anterior facial vein. The superficial temporal vein together with the maxillary vein unite together to give the retromandibular vein or posterior facial vein. And then the retromandibular vein which lies behind uh, the ramus of the mandible will split into anterior division and posterior divisions. The posterior auricular vein unite with the posterior division of the retromandibular vein to form the external jugular vein. And finally, the occipital vein drain directly into the suboccipital venous plexus. We can see it here. The supratrochlear and the supraorbital veins unite at the medial angle of the eye to form the anterior facial vein. The superficial temporal vein unite with the maxillary vein behind the neck of the mandible to form the retromandibular vein, which splits at the angle of the mandible into anterior division and posterior division. The posterior division of the retromandibular unites with the posterior auricular vein, remember posterior with the posterior, to form the external jugular vein. While its anterior division unites with the anterior division of the facial vein, again the anterior with the anterior, unite together to form the common facial vein. The common facial vein drain into the internal jugular vein, while the external jugular vein drain into the subclavian vein. For the lymphatic drainage of the scalp and face, it follows the same pattern as the arterial distribution. So, lymphatic drainage from the occipital region drain into the occipital lymph nodes and from them to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. The area of the scalp and face behind or posterior to the auricle will drain into the mastoid nodes. They are also called retroauricular or posterior auricular lymph nodes and from there to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. The area of the skin anterior to the ear and also the surface of the parotid glands will drain into the preauricular and parotid lymph nodes. Some lymphatic drainage from the forehead goes to the submandibular lymph nodes. We can see it here in this diagram. The area of the scalp at the occipital region drain into the occipital lymph nodes and goes downward to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. The area of the skin behind the ear into the mastoid lymph nodes and also from there to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. In front of the auricle, it will uh, drain into the preauricular and the parotid lymph nodes. The skin of the forehead, the side of the face, including the upper and lower eyelids, the side of the nose, the upper lips, the teeth into the submandibular lymph nodes, while the skin of the lower lip, the chin, the central incisors and the tip of the tongue into the submental lymph nodes. Now let's try to solve this MCQ question. The lymphatic drainage of the tip of the tongue is into which of the following? Submental lymph nodes, submandibular lymph nodes, parotid lymph nodes or occipital lymph nodes. Please scan the code below and drop your answer. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload another video. Thanks again for listening. See you in the next video. Bye.